Okay. All right, good afternoon, Birmingham Public Library and happy Pride. My name is Chelsea from your division of out, uh, your Department of Outreach. Um, and it is my pleasure to introduce Josh Coleman, the LGBTQ plus liaison for the city of Birmingham. Hi, Josh. Hey, Chelsea, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing today? Doing great. It's Pride Month. We're coming to an end. Of the month. We're still celebrating all year long. And I want to first thank you for this series. It's been so great thus far. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I'm just so glad that you are a part of it. Now, for whoever doesn't know, the LGBTQ plus liaison, that position is new to the city of Birmingham and was established in 2018. Would you mind telling me what you do in that position? Yeah, definitely. So this position, the LGBTQ liaison position, which falls in the division of social justice and racial equity, the whole division was created uh, in 2018 through Mayor Woodfin's vision of a more fair and inclusive city. So simply put, my role as the LGBTQ liaison is I serve as a thought partner to not only the mayor, but any city department or division around LGBTQ issues. It's the first time that uh, an openly out LGBTQ member has a seat at the decision-making table, and it's very um, encouraging that our community is, has a voice and representation on that. Yes, that is wonderful. I'm so happy um, to hear that. And now for a moment, would you mind sharing with us your proudest moment in this position? Yeah, so there's several um, moments that I'm proud of. There's a, there's a lot that's been done over the last three years. Um, you know, whether it is um, helping finish the non-discrimination ordinance uh, that was passed uh, by the city council and helping uh, stand up the Human Rights Commission that is a commission to hear discriminatory complaints within the city that was out of the non-discrimination ordinance, or whether it is uh, finally um, us offering fully trans inclusive health care benefits to city employees. Um, and there's a lot of milestones along the way. Mayor Woodfin joining Mayors Against Discrimination uh, is definitely a proud moment. The mayor signing on with 100, over 140 other mayors and council members across the country to encourage uh, federal protections for LGBTQ uh, individuals through the passage of the Equality Act. There's been numerous milestones along the way, uh, uh, similar to that. There, there's just so much that we can be proud of. Yeah, that's wonderful. What a what a great list of things that have been accomplished over the last three years. Now, would you mind telling us um, some things that maybe our patrons should know about city policy or how to get involved? Yeah, so it, it was new to me coming in, uh, learning about city policy and how to navigate um, city hall, right? Like uh, it, it's the city establishment. It's uh, it's everything that you think it is, and it's nothing that you think it is, all at the same time. But really, we we lead from a standpoint of um, really our, our core principles here at the city is putting people first and really trying to hear um, not only from internal city employees, uh, but also residents around policies. There's uh, several policy initiatives that our division are working on now and will continue to work on and have been working on for quite some time. Uh, it just takes time. So one thing to know is um, there is a process. It does move slow, slowly at times and it moves fast at times. Um, there's never a wrong or a right answer uh, to anything policy related, but it, it really does come from a servant heart and to making sure that everything that we do and what's walked down really is in the best interest of um, the entire community and the entire, entire city that we make up. Now that's interesting. So I know that with city government, there's a lot of gas and breaks. Um, there'll be times where it's just like, well, what's happening? And there's probably plenty happening behind the scenes. So how can, uh, how can patrons and, and citizens get clued into all the good things that are happening? Yeah, so uh, sh show up, uh, ask questions, yeah. uh, build relationships. It's, it's obvious the 
the easy answer, but so this is shameless plug, the ACE program, oh. I actually have the pleasure of leading. So the Academy of Civic Engagement was designed to be just that. Um, a, it's a, it is designed to get everyday Birmingham residents involved in city government. And it is a seven week uh, course. It start, it, we've just started. So if you're hearing this and you wanna jump on board, feel free to reach plugged in, but it is just that. It's a seven week civic engagement program designed to get you directly involved with city government, no matter what that looks like, whether it's through participating on a board and agency, through the program, you'll learn how to do that. Whether it's just volunteering, being engaged with your neighborhood association structure, getting more involved with who your city council member is, we have residents join the program that are at all different levels. Some are very clued in to everything that happens in the city, who their council member is, who their neighborhood officers is. And then we have residents that have no clue. They've never attended a meeting, but they wanna get involved for various reasons. So the program is that. We want you to get involved. We want to pull the curtain back so you can see what happens inside city government and how you can get plugged in. Um, and through the program, you get to meet different leaders. Of course, you interact with the mayor and uh, mo yeah. council, but you also get to interact with different department and division heads. So you really get to see like how decisions are made, why streets are paved when they're paved, how potholes are filled. My favorite piece of the program is equipment management. When you learn A, how old some of that equipment is and B, how much it costs and how much it costs to maintain. It, it's really eye-opening. We are going into our fourth season of ACE and every class that we have, I know that I learn a lot and so mm -hmm. ever evolving. So it, it really is a great program. It's uh, virtual this year, again, due to the pandemic, we'll have some in-person touch points where we'll offer our participants uh, some free tools of different cultural institutions, our orientation with socially distanced in person. And then when you graduate the program, you'll have an opportunity to fellowship in person. But oh, wow. it is, um, the application window closed, but we can still take you. We've only started week one this week. So birminghamal.gov slash ACE, A-C-E, and we can get you plugged in if you're interested. Wow, awesome. Thank you for giving us that plug. That's good information to have. Now, you said that this year, it, a lot of it has been virtual. Now, are those uh, virtual classes, would they be available online anywhere? Yeah, so actually the virtual uh, platform we use is LRNG. So you can log in, it's, it, it really is kind of like if you take online classes for college mm -hmm. or training for a job, you log in, you have your own unique login. It has the whole course there. Each week we'll unlock, this week we've unlocked city hall tour. So you'll get a video yeah. from here, some city council members, and we actually do a virtual city hall uh, kind of tour. And at the end of the learning, there's a couple of questions, you earn a badge. And then each Thursday we do an optional Zoom check-in. So tonight at 5.30, we'll do a check-in, see how everyone's feeling, see if people need help navigating the platform. And then immediately after the next week's um, content will release. So I think next week is public safety. So then you'll get a chance to hear from the various uh, leaders in the public safety divisions uh, and departments. And then it's, it's the same thing for seven weeks. Uh, and so it's very important uh, that we provide some in-person opportunities. Uh, so that's why orientation, graduation, yeah. and some different things will be in-person because it really is, A, we want you to learn, but B, we want the residents to connect to city leaders and department yeah. leaders and each other. One great thing about the program is you meet people that you may have never met before because we bring folks from all over the city together to experience this program. Great. Now, would you mind telling me, like, what is it like being, being in policy discussions at the city and advocating for LGBTQ rights? Yeah, so it's very interesting. I, I tell people we have to meet people where they are. Um, we have obviously uh, supporters and allies of the community. And then we have folks that are not so supportive and not so much of allies. So we, it really is, there's an education piece that we start with first, right? So we meet people where they are, we educate them, and then we move forward to talk about different policies and different initiatives. And a lot of it is just being there, uh, being out, having, an openly LGBTQ person at the decision-making table. And they have, you know, uh, 
regardless of what the policy is, now we take into account, I believe, a segment of Birmingham that could have often been left behind just simply because there was no uh, equitable lens to look through. Um, and mm -hmm. so the goal is to provide that through the whole division and the work that the whole division does is really to provide an equitable lens uh, to the decisions that are being made uh, throughout the city because it does, uh, every decision locally affects the lives of so many uh, who live, work, and come to the city of Birmingham. Oh. So. Yes. Also, um, so the city of Birmingham, they re we received a 100% score on the Human Rights Campaign uh, Municipal uh, um, Equality Index. Would you mind telling me what this metric means and how we, well, it's a two-part question. We'll start with, what does this metric mean to us? Yeah, so the HRC, the Human Rights Campaign Municipality Equality Index is just that, it's an index scorecard and the national organization, the Human Rights Commission, obviously is the, the country's largest LGBTQ ag advocacy group um, that is on the front lines of fighting for change across the country. And so they rate uh, cities across America at some odd like 560 cities that they rank um, using the scorecard. Birmingham, uh, when this, when Mayor Wishman came into office and we stood up this office, it, that was the first time that the city of Birmingham had had a 100. And we've had to maintain that 100 since then, being one of only a handful of cities in the South, but only about 80 cities across the country to receive a 100. And I like to say that it, it is just that it's a scorecard um, and there's more work after this scorecard to be done, right? So like, but this is a really great starting point. These positions such as mine serving as a LGBTQ liaison, there's not a blueprint for that. And so I feel like the scorecard really does lay some foundational work. This is HRC saying all cities um, across America are different, they're at different places. Um, a New York and a LA is not a Birmingham or a Montgomery, but it gives us the flexibility to strive for it. Hey, these are the basic uh, things that we want to, to get done. And I think the first year we received 100 in 2018, I wrote an op-ed that's published in AL.com that talks about that. Mm -hmm. This is a starting point and we've done the starting point and we'll continue. Now we've received 100 on the scorecard. There's other things on the scorecard that we can strive for. And this isn't the end all to be all, but we received that 100 by really in a few areas. Having my position is one of those areas that receives us credit on the scorecard. If we're talking about mm -hmm. hard, having this position, having an LGBTQ liaison in the police department, providing that non-discrimination policy that created a human rights commission, that is part of it reporting our hate crimes that happen in the city of Birmingham to the FBI is another component of it. Having um, a strong stance from the city leadership uh, on LGBTQ equality, that is obviously another component of it. Offering trans inclusive healthcare benefits to city employees, that is another uh, place. You can view all of this online. Um, but as you see, those are just some of the foundational measures that we can take to be more, a more fair and inclusive city. And as far as this rating is concerned, uh, we want to maintain a 100%. Um, a, it's the right thing to do. And the impact that uh, kind of bullet points initiatives have is really life changing for some folks. And then the second part is showing that Birmingham is really diverse and inclusive, uh, whether it be in practice or on a scorecard, is good for business. People wanna come to, uh, companies relocate for various reasons and they, they choose locations that they know that if they are bringing their talent and their money and their resources into, that they wanna know that everyone that they bring along with them is respected uh, in, in the community. And so that is another strong point. This is a staple that says, hey, based on this national organization, Birmingham is where it should be. Not saying that the works we don't work to be done, but at a foundational level, we're there and we are nothing but sky's the limits from here on out. Yeah. And now looking forward, like using this metric as a jumping off point, what are some, some things on like your on your wish list for moving forward and making Birmingham the most inclusive city it can be? 
Yeah, so I think it starts uh, out with the education piece. We have a lot of education still left to do, uh, whether it's through various city departments uh, in, internally and then externally for our partners and some folks that may not be uh, where we want them to be uh, as far as inclusivity. And, and, but we're here and we, and we can get that work done. And then the other part is really uh, working with community partners. One thing that we did early on was create a LGBTQ advisory board that's made up of 28 members from across all spectrums of the community uh, to come together with myself and the mayor to advise on different issues and happenings throughout the city. Uh, even if it's just ideas of, hey, we could be doing X, Y, and Z differently or better. And yeah. so making sure that um, everyone has a voice and a seat at the table um, is another yeah. thing we have to be really uh, intentional about. So. Yeah, there's uh, a plethora of work. Yeah. yeah. Now, how do how would patrons get involved in the advisory board? Yes. Yeah, so that you the, mentioned? yeah, that board serves on two year terms. Uh, so mm -hmm. we got about a year and a half left on this one. Uh, but I tell folks, if you want to get involved in that, you can email uh, me, uh, Josh Coleman at BirminghamAL.gov. You can also email Justice at BirminghamAL.gov. And we can get you plugged in just because you don't officially serve on the advisory board doesn't mean that we don't value your opinion and input. I tell folks, you can always schedule a meeting with me. My door is always open. We can always talk through whatever. If you have ideas or suggestions about a different policies or different initiatives that the city is doing or how the LGBTQ community in particular is impacted or can be impacted, we are all ears um, and very much value that. And then, um, there's an opening on the advisory board and we need someone to fill it, then we'll have that database of folks that we know that are interested in serving. Yeah. Awesome. Wow, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all of this information about what the city has going on that can help LGBTQ um, people. Also, would you mind sharing with us your favorite pride memory? Yeah, so it's very interesting. I've had the opportunity to serve on the actual Central Alabama Pride Board uh, mm -hmm. and now I'm serving as a union president uh, kind of role through a transitionary period there. But when I think about Pride, my favorite, it, there's so many, right? So like one of my favorite experiences is um, two really that are kind of cool to me is meeting uh, Jordan Sparks when she was here for Pride. That Ooh, was, yeah. yeah, so you know, the celebration that happens in Birmingham is always free. It's always open to everyone. And so it really is an opportunity to celebrate yourself and each other. A lot of times it's the only, our first time that a lot of the young folks uh, get to really come and express themselves freely uh, and see other people uh, that they can look up to and see themselves and other folks, right? So it's very important that that uh, takes place. The most touching moment of pride um, really happened this year there was a we had a, several people sign up to volunteer but this one lady checked in at the volunteer station and i happened to be there and she introduced herself and thanked us for allowing her to be there and then shared her story that um her daughter was trans and last year um she passed away and she had never her and her family had never really embraced and supported her daughter and this was her first pride celebration to attend, but she didn't just want to attend. Her and the entire family wanted to volunteer and give back in her daughter's memory. And so that really touched me um, hearing the story at first. At the end of the day, when we were cleaning up and picking up trash at the end of the uh, festivities, she was still there picking up trash. And she came up and said, and told us, you know, thanked us again for allowing them to volunteer, told us to reach out if we needed help in the future, but let us know that how touching it was to see a community come together and embrace everyone. And it was, you know, touching for them to do that in, in their daughter's memory, but it was also touching for us to hear that personal story. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Oh boy. Well, thank you so much for one, being here and sharing all this great information um, and happy pride. Yes, happy pride. I'm always the phone call away. So anytime, uh, just let me know whatever you need and anyone that sees this, uh, feel free to reach out. 
Yeah, would you one more time just uh, tell us your email address for anyone who wants to get in contact with you? Yeah, definitely, Josh, J-O-S-H dot Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N, at Birmingham, A-L dot G-O-V. Wonderful. You're a star, thank you. You're a star. <laughs> Have a good afternoon, okay? You too, talk to you soon. Bye.